Hello, it's good to see you today. Uh, my name is Jason and we're having a five-part Bible study series on the security of God. It'll be made into a full-length video with highlights and uh, other uh, video pictures within the studies to encourage meditation and, and thinking of the Lord. So it's good to see you and I trust that this will be a blessing to you. So let's come before the Lord. Father God, we just praise you and give you all the glory today. And Father, we just pray that you bless the reading of your word and the study of your word today to our hearts. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Okay, um, our key verse uh, today is Romans chapter 8, verse 28. It says, And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. One writer said, As we see the toil of suffering in the world around us, the prevalence of decay and death in the natural order, let us remember that the whole procession is moving towards a mighty climax. In the book of Romans, and in verse 28, Romans 8, 28, we know that the world and everything is moving towards the climax of God's children meeting and being with their Father, Father God, forever and ever. And, and we know that whatever happens to us, history is moving towards that goal. And so one writer said, nothing can separate us from Christ's love. Nothing that, would, that the world can do to us can really harm us. So no matter what anybody or anything happens, nothing can take us away from what God is doing in our life. The scriptures teach that... that the Bible teaches like if you look at Psalm 44 if you get a chance to have a look at Psalm 44 especially verse 22 the scriptures show us that that often the Lord's people suffer you know the Lord recognizes that we do suffer and in that suffering God has provided us a provision in his word to help us through and, and that provision is Romans chapter 8 verse 28 onwards is an amazing provision if we're struggling or suffering and in verse 28 it says and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God to those who are the called according to his purpose it says and we know Paul says and we know we couldn't know about the love of God and his comfort for us unless we had the Bible unless we had the Word of God that's the only reason we know God loves us because the Word of God tells us so we can't push out the Bible, we can't neglect the Bible. The Bible is key to a knowledge of the love of God. And then it says, and we know that all things work together for good. All things work together for good. That means anything in your past, what things in your past get you down? Things that have happened to you, what things come and, and discourage you, pull you down and get you down? Well, God says all things work together for good. That means even your bad things that have happened to you, even the negative things that have happened to you, God can turn it around and he's working those things for your good. Isn't that amazing? If we turn to Genesis 37, um, Genesis 37, verse 12, Genesis 37 verse 12 Sorry It says Then his brothers went to feed their flocks in Shechem And Israel said to Joseph Are not your brothers feeding the flock in Shechem? Come I will send you to them So he said to him Here I am then he said to him, Please go and see if it is well with your brothers and, w and, and well with the flocks and bring back word to me. So he sent him out of the valley of Hebron and he went to Shechem. Now a certain man found him there and he was wandering in the field and a man asked him saying, What are you seeking? 
So he said, I am seeking my brothers. Please tell me where they are feeding the flocks. And the man said, They have departed from here, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dotham. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them in Dotham. Now when they saw him afar off, even before he came near them, they conspired to kill him. And they said to another, Luke, this dreamer is coming. Come, therefore, let us now kill him and cast him into the pit, and we shall say, Some wild beast has devoured him. We shall see what will become of his dreams. And if you remember the story of Joseph, his brothers threw him into a pit. Then they sold him to be a slave. And Joseph went off to be a slave. He, he, he ended up getting a job in Potiphar's house. He was accused of committing adultery with Potiphar's wife. Joseph then went to prison. but And then in the end, Joseph became the prime minister of Egypt. And in the end, his brothers came to see him. And he revealed his identity to them. And he said, you meant it for harm, but God meant it for good. But all that pain and suffering that Joseph had gone through, that Bible verse in Romans where it says, all things work together for good to them that love God. For Joseph, he could say, all things work together for good. Even his own brothers were nasty to him, yet God was able to turn it around and work for good in Joseph's life. And whatever nasty things have ever happened to you, whatever gets you down, God is working it all out for your purpose, uh, for your, for you, for, to help you, to give you strength, to, for your good. You know, all things work together for good for them that love God. But then let's go back to Romans 8. Now, you might have questioned, well, why does God allow evil? These are too deep. We've just got to take what Scripture says. And Scripture says, all things work together for your good. Sorry. I... And then he says, for good. To those who love God, we've got to be loving God. Why are we living? We should be living for God and his glory. To those who are called according to his purpose. You know, what is your purpose in life? Well, it's God's purpose. Your purpose is wrapped up in God's purpose. So what's God's purpose? Well, let's have a look. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9. He says, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9. Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ before the time began. The purpose of God is this. Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling. He's called us to a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before the time began. The purpose of God is that you get saved, that you live and conform to the image of his son and that you come home to be with him for his glory. That's God's purpose. And if you believe in Christ, you're in the purpose of God. And, and, and God's purpose is going to come to be. He's going to bring you home for eternity. So you don't need to say, well, I'm unemployed. I don't know what my purpose is. I'm... Um, Something's happened to me bad. I don't know what my purpose is. You know what your purpose is. God saved you. God wants to sanctify you. And God wants you to take, take you home. He's got a purpose for you. And it's wrapped up in his glory and plan of salvation for you. So you're secure in God's purpose. I trust that will be a blessing to you. And, um, you know, I, I hope that uh, the next part of the video will be a blessing to you. And uh, I just pray that God will be with you. So God bless you and uh, hope to see you soon. Take care now. God bless.